in the previous video I posted on YouTube, we saw how to create this gradient that goes along a stroke. And we talked about one of the drawbacks, which is when the stroke crosses over itself normally, it kind of merges and melts together. Well, I thought there must be a way to get that to overlap correctly. And in this tutorial, we'll take a look at how this can cross over itself and stay nice and crisp. So let's say this is the shape we want, but we don't like this weird merging and melting and these artifacts in the middle. So what we need to do is select this layer and duplicate it. So I'm gonna press Control J and now I have two copies of this layer. This second layer, let's call this one two. And what I want on this layer is not to have any of these effects. And if you didn't watch the previous video, and you want to see how this effect is made it's simply a stroke with these settings here outline with these settings this is what the gradient looks like and then there's also outer glow these are the settings for that an outer shadow these are the settings for that a bevel and emboss and these are those settings so pretty quick and easy to set up you can watch the previous video or you can try to set it up yourself but now that we know that, on this second layer, what I want to do is turn off everything except the main effect, which is this outline here and this bevel and emboss. So this outer glow, this outer shadow, we could turn those off. We'll just keep the main glow and shadow from our bottom curve here. What I want to do now is chop this thing up. I want to get a curve that goes from here to this point here. So making sure I turn off the background layer or else things are gonna get really confusing. Making sure that this is the one we're on. I'm gonna click this part. And if you don't have a good point to split your curve, you can just mouse over a certain point. And when you see that perpendicular line, just click on that, you'll get extra point, keeping the same exact shape. But this point is gonna work for me. So I'll select that, hit this button up here, break curve and now you'll see where we had one curve we now have two curves and I just want one of these so I don't need this one here and I'll delete it pretty simple if I turn on the back curve you can see okay now we do have this overlapping nicely we just got to clean up this end here so I'm gonna turn this off now I'm gonna create a shape Let's just draw around the part that we want. I always forget if we draw around the part that we want or the part that we don't want, but I got no fill. I got no stroke on the shape here, and that is fine. I'm going to take curve two. I'm going to click and drag it over that new shape that we're going to use as a mask. And you'll see if we drag it up, I don't want to drag it anywhere else, like to the side here, above. I want my line just to look exactly how it is here and I'll release. So now we're masking out everything on this side here. And when we turn this bottom layer on, it looks pretty good, but we got a little bit of a blending here where the two shapes are merging. So I need to find my mask, which is this curve here by clicking on it and extend it out just a little bit. Okay, so that covers that part and everything is good. One thing is if you draw your mask on the wrong side, you might end up seeing something like this. In that case, it's a pretty simple fix. Just move this around. And if you need more detail, just click on one of the edges with this tool active here, the node tool. And if you needed more detail, you could fit your mask this way. Once we get far enough from this part here, everything is gonna look smooth and seamless. And we've got this nice overlapping stroke with the gradient on it. Really cool stuff. And the one thing to note is you probably wanna avoid tapering off your curve with this pressure setting here. Let's select this, make sure that our curve two is selected. We'll go to the taper 
that's going to be a nightmare. So avoid doing that. If I go to my original curve and I try to taper that, I'm going to have some issues. Now what I can try and do is I know this is somewhere about halfway down the curve. And if I make an adjustment here, I can see, okay, that's not what I want. But if I go on this side and make an adjustment here, now you can see as long as we don't interfere with what's going on with the width up to about this point, we do have a little bit of flexibility and we could add some taper for some interesting effects on this side, but just gotta be careful that if we come too far, let's see if I can do that here. Like here we're still good, but if we go too far, we're gonna ruin everything. So you could see it's, it's not quite even there. So I'm gonna press undo and I'm gonna press undo again and again until it was good. I'm gonna click here just to put a placeholder and I can see I'm still getting a little bit of an issue here. So I'm gonna put another placeholder somewhere around here. And I'm gonna try this one more time. Okay, so now we got placeholders to, to keep this end from going down too small. And we got a placeholder here to do exactly the same thing. That's how you could create a taper on a stroke that has a gradient.